Yeah, hi guys, Matt. Again, next 72 hours. We're just going to go through some of the fire starting uh, methods we know, fire by friction. Uh, we've got a few things we want to cover. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm putting on a bit of paracord onto the of my bow, which is a, just a piece of eucalyptus that I've had for ages. It's an unusual state, shape. What I like about the bow is it's very stiff. You can see I'm pulling quite hard and there's very little um, movement. Now, some people will tell you with a bow, what they want is something very bendy, like a bow and arrow style bow. Well, don't listen to them. What you want is something pretty stiff, and it will hold that drill really, really well. So basically what you do is you, you know, obviously tie it off on uh, both ends, but uh, one of those ends will be, I mean, you don't want it too thick, uh, too tight, uh, because you want to have enough um, grip around the uh, drill. Now since one of the drills we'll be using today is back to the actual uh, grass tree store and it's very soft, the actual outside's got a sort of hard sheath to it but the inner core is very pithy. So we want the spring a little bit softer maybe than if we were using this uh, eucalyptus bow, uh, sorry, eucalyptus drill, uh, which is squared off in this case. Uh, the squaring off actually means it grips a little better. Now. I don't have uh, a, a large length here at the moment, but you can see this here is the, um, the sort of, it's a, it's a rock climbing kermantle rope. You see it's very stiff, it's almost sort of feels like wire. And this, this the endurance of this is just amazing. It just will, you can have it has a fire drill string, um, sorry, a fire bow string for a long time. So that's, uh, you can see if it just bend it, it sort of sits there. I don't know what size that is, it's probably a 3 or 4 mil. Say, so, what do you reckon, a 3 mil? Oh, yeah, three I guess a 3 or 4 mil. And uh, as you can see, compared to the um, paracord, paracord it just feels a lot softer in the hand. So um, I've never actually used the paracord before as a bowstring. I would suspect the kermantle on the outside uh, isn't as robust as this. I'd imagine this will give out much faster than this. But to be honest, there's lots of other advantages to having a paracord uh, in your uh, emergency survival kit. So uh, that's why we're supplying this with our emergency supply, uh, emergency kits. Uh, uh, the and of course, if it was an emergency fire starting, you're you know lost for a couple of a couple of days. It's, you're not worried about the string lasting for like weeks and weeks and weeks of use, um, that won't be a problem. So I just duck that in there. Okay, so, got a few things. We'll be using the same socket that I've displayed before, which is a split piece of wood. <coughs> Inside of this there's a bone uh, bearing surface that you can see that it's been split on the edge, uh, lengthways, and I've just uh, carved a little recess for the bone and put it in there. It just means it lasts a heck of a lot longer. It doesn't heat up as much and the actual uh, bow drill doesn't pop out uh, as much as um, it would if it was a piece of wood. Okay so today what we're going to do, I'm not sure the name of this, it's an Australian rainforest tree. Um, I've had this in the garden for, uh, or ducked up in the dry for about a year. Um, was from actually our old place. Uh, the, the parrots used to love it. Now, I know this will actually start a fire. Uh, I've used it many times. Another thing, in this, another plant in Australia that will actually, you can actually start a fire with as a baseboard material is um, the umbrella tree. And if you get a trunk the same size as this, and it has to be dry, of course, an umbrella tree is, um, it doesn't drop dead wood. Um, so you'd have to cut it and dry it for a couple of months. Uh, before you could actually use it as a baseboard. Now this tree, what the advantage, I'll probably go back to the, I'll see if I can go back to the old place and actually take a photo of the tree, I'm not sure the name. It actually, well, the good thing about it is it self prunes in that you'll see, if you look up the tree, there's a lot of dead branches up the tree, so, uh, and off the ground. So, uh, you know, you could, in a uh, rainforest situation, knock those branches off. You know they're going to be drier than branches on the ground, where, which have been sitting in moisture on the on the rainforest floor. So that is what is good about this type of wood is that you can actually gather probably uh, timbers that are actually reasonably dry from uh, up in the canopy rather than 
on the ground. The other things we're going to try to do today time, is we're going to go through the bamboo fire starting method. Uh, again, this is a probably bamboo with a three meter wall thickness. The, that really is only applicable when we're using uh, this, which is this, which we rub on. We're trying to saw through this end, through this side here, and pop out on that side. And when that happens, all well, the ash builds up in there and can start a fire. Now, the disadvantage with that is this is split from the same piece, is that this isn't actually that strong at three mils. So the, the, the ideal scenario would be to have multiple size pieces of bamboo, have one about three or four mils that you're drilling through or um, sawing through, and the other can be a much thicker piece of uh, bamboo that you've actually then, at this edge, you've actually um, reduced down to a similar size, a three mil size. Uh, that way this will be a lot stronger. And you might see what I mean when I do that, because what will happen if I put too much pressure on this, this actually can split. And, uh, and of course, then you have to find another uh, another saw to use. It just runs too hard. So those are the few things we're going to try and cover today. Uh, anything else, Phil? Can you think of? No. Nope. Okay. So we'll wrap this uh, session up, and I'll set up a few more things, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. Okay, guys. So what I'm just doing here is um, just preparing the tinder bundle, and this is agave. Uh, which is very much like this one. I think this is a little mini agave, but um, uh, the leaves go really dry, and then inside the leaves there's all these fibers. You can see the other end where the, the actual fibers are, of the base is. So what I've been trying to do is separate out fibers, but just wax with a piece of wood. You can do this wood on water, wood on stone. Not particularly worried about the fibers itself. I'm trying to get rid of the pit so that the when I say I'm not particularly worried about the fibers, I'm not particularly worried about damaging the fibers against the stone. If I was doing this for rope making, I'd be more careful and be doing the sort of like uh, wood on wood. So just separating them out. Probably just doing this part down here as demo because I won't be using it for the bottom. We obviously don't want to use up all our fiber bundle either, but um, in one hit. But also, we don't want to miss that window opportunity. Now, two things: in a survival opportunity, you're trying to uh, keep your energy. Uh, you don't consume too much energy. The other thing too is most fire by friction methods require a lot of energy, and um, if you don't get it the two or three times by the you know number fourth time, you're pretty buggered. So. Uh, you want to prep really well. So you don't want to skimp on your fiber bundle. You don't want to start your fire bow before you're ready. So you, you want it to be really smooth. Um, so anyway, so this is a this is a bit of a the finer end. This is the finer material. And there's a lot more coarse material here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll have the finer materials in the center. You know, lots of like um, steel wool. And I'll just wrap just the coarser materials around the outside. I like that. And what we're going to do is get Phil to actually give us a shot. But Phil hasn't actually done fire by friction very much. A couple of times with me before, maybe once or twice, uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, he will be a bit of a of a amateur on this. So it would be good to catch that on film see how he goes because it's all well and good me showing you how to do it. I've got all these little subtle little skills and stuff that I maybe don't really uh, share or you know like muscle memory and all that sort of thing. So maybe still doing it would be more education. So anyway let me finish the fiber bundle and we'll get to hopefully the next shot with Phil. Um, having a go. Okay guys you can see that I've actually teased this out quite well. You can see that the other end is much finer, so obviously this is where you want your initial spark to, to catch. And uh, I'll show you a bit of a trick that I didn't mention. I just want to get rid of a bit more fibers maybe. What I'm going to try is I'm going to actually do it opposite to what you think. Okay, so I'm putting the thicker material in the middle. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap and I'm rolling the finer material around the outside. 
and I'll show you why in a second. So I rolled it right around the outside. Um, okay, so there we go. So thicker material in the middle, fine on the outside. Dumb, you reckon? But what we're going to do is turn it inside out. Okay, so now the thicker material is on the outside, the nice fine material is on the inside, and it actually holds together. So that's a little bit of a trick for you. Looks like a little bird's nest. Thicker material now is on the outside, thinner material on the inside. Okay?